What I want to do today in this webinar is to um, circle around an issue um, that is um, common to many psychologists and psychologies, um, the issue of identity, personal identity, what does that mean, and, um, and show how uh, uh, thinking about identity from a depth psychological Jungian standpoint um, adds complexity to the issue and I, I hope opens um, our minds to um, the several layers and possibilities and, and nuances of this, of this issue. Now, the reason I chose identity as the topic um, is that it is such a um, uh, contemporary, uh, at the moment, um, point of discussion um, all around the world largely because of globalization uh, and because of uh, mass migration and movement of peoples um, into and out of various cultures. And uh, as we know, uh, identity is very much rooted in uh, location, in uh, tribal identification, language, religion, uh, and um, when we start moving the, the players around, start, people start moving into uh, uh, new cultures, um, and those cultures having to accept these newcomers and migrants, uh, suddenly the question of identity becomes very, very acute. Um, who are we? Uh, who are we as a people? Uh, if you're uh, if you're living in a country that, uh, like Germany, for instance, today, a million migrants from the Middle East suddenly show up to your doorstep, um, there's a lot of questioning of uh, uh, what is it to be German? If the same thing in France. What is it to be French? Are these people going to become like, like we are? Uh, uh, people coming in with other religions, languages, cultural backgrounds, histories. Um, and so um, uh, collective identity, national identity, uh, becomes an extremely important issue, including in the United States, which is so multicultural, but still raises the question, um, who are we, what are we, and how, how should we think about ourselves? This is from a book uh, by Eric Neumann. It's, um, uh, a collection of essays, uh, and uh, this particular essay is called The Psyche and the Reality Planes. And um, uh, Eric Neumann gives us this, this diagram, and he's talking about three types of consciousness. Um, and the first one on the left side, a constellation of consciousness, he says, uh, um, you can see if you look at it carefully, uh, at the top, uh, psyche and world are very separated. There are two closed rings. Um, you have the ego. At the center of the ego, there is the self, but it's just a dot. It's uh, more or less un unknown, but it's, it's there. Uh, this is the name that only the cat knows, and this ego might not even be aware of it. Uh, and then outside of the range of the ego and the level of the ego, below it, you have what he calls an archetypal field and a self field. These are lower layers of, of consciousness. And you can see that the ego is very encapsulated. Uh, uh, it is uh, separated from the world. It, the, uh, in this consciousness, the psyche and the world are very divided. This is the Cartesian split. You have the subject and the object, um, and uh, they're very uh, uh, definitively separated. Um, and you have also a very clear separation from uh, between ego and the unconscious. Now, this um, diagram describes the achievement of the Western ego in the first half of life, ego development. 
um, how does the unconscious, what, what, what has been uh, placed in the unconscious through this process of separation, uh, become a part of our ego consciousness? And here we have uh, an arrow showing how um, material from the unconscious can enter ego consciousness, and that is uh, in the form of dreams. Now, this awareness that uh, dreams um, can break through into our consciousness and give us information about what's in the unconscious was one of the great discoveries of psychoanalysis and Freud. Freud's greatest book, The Interpretation of Dreams, um, tells the story of how um, a person gains consciousness of um, hidden, what Jung would call shadow uh, feelings and emotions and motivations uh, through dreams and associating to dreams. Freud gives many examples in there of uh, how that uh, uh, works and, uh, and how uh, the unacceptable thoughts of the unconscious are, are dressed up in disguise and presented to uh, the, the sleeping consciousness so that um, they can get through the membrane of the separation. Um, Jung had a different theory of dream interpretation, but it's the same idea that the dreams show us uh, what's going on in the unconscious. And if we can take that up into consciousness sufficiently, we can open the doors between conscious and unconscious to a degree. And, uh, and uh, one of Jung's techniques for um, opening that door wider was what he called active imagination, where when you take a dream and you continue working with it in consciousness, uh, deepen it to, or do active imagination with it, you uh, expand your awareness of what's in the unconscious. You get this feeling, we're living in one world, time and eternity. And you see the figure there, this is from alchemy, and he's living uh, in the world of ego and the sun, solar consciousness, uh, which is a familiar landscape and uh, enclosed, uh, that's his ego conscious world. And he's sticking his head through and looking out into the cosmos and uh, reaching out to it. And this feeling of, um, breaking through that boundary of ego consciousness into uh, a realm of transcendence, uh, visible otherwise, even beyond the stars outside of the whole cosmos system, uh, is that feeling of um, uh, transcendent uh, experience in the, in, within the time and space world. And so that coming together of time and eternity uh, is what Jung was um, suggesting when he turned to the audience and said, you are the Dioscuri, you are the Castor and Pollux, you have a, a mortal and an immortal uh, aspect to yourself, to your personality, and take that into account as your identity. You are twins, every one of you are twins. Um, and that's a way of thinking about the ego and the self, that the ego is the mortal uh, side of us, mortal figure uh, in the story, the identity that we have in our particular life and history and culture. And then there's the immortal one who is outside of time uh, uh, and space. And when Jung and uh, and uh, Wolfgang Pauli were trying to create a model to think about the relation of the time-space continuum, as it's called in, in physics. You put time-space over here, that's one reality. They put opposite the time-space continuum, synchronicity, the synchronistic uh, principle. And these two um, are in a in a polarity or a tension, a relationship, um, where the one describes the ego consciousness of all of us as we live our uh, three score and 10 years or more. And then there's the other, the synchronistic, the transcendent, the eternal, the immortal, outside of the time-space continuum, 
uh, uh, objective meaning uh, acts of creation in time, as Jung calls synchronicity. Um, and the awareness of that, uh, of both of those, um, you could say characterizes late stage individuation uh, of uh, people who actually uh, are able to penetrate the um, beyond the boundaries of normal ego consciousness.